Hey, I'm Alice. And I'm Harrison. Welcome to Studio 20 Live. Welcome back to our seventh episode of Studio 20 Live. We're pretty glad to still be here. Yeah, lucky number seven. I'm feeling good about this one, Alice. Well, we've got a lot jam-packed in today. We're going to be crossing over to some kids at an archaeology site and talking to Andre about the news, all things protests and 40K. We're also looking at love for the last pop-up of the semester. We've got the rant and My Kitchen Go Rules. We get to cross over to Paris and finish up with a performance from We Came For Dinosaurs. If you didn't catch them at the band comp, you'll be able to see them today. But before all of that, we're joined by not one, but two Limelight guests this week. First of all, we're going to be joined by Ben from Mind Blank. <laughs> Ben, it's great to have you here on the show. How are you going? I'm doing pretty well. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Now, Mind Blank, Blank uses theatre to communicate issues in mental health. Can you tell us a little bit about how that happens? Sure. Mind Blank is an organisation that was set up by a UOW graduate. Uh, we do forum theatre productions mostly for high school students between the ages of about 14 and 18, so years 9 to 12. Forum theatre works by, we present a play, it's pretty short, and it goes pretty badly. It ends really badly, in okay. fact. Then the students, through the MC, get to decide what the actors are going to do to change that. So we go back to the beginning, change some stuff up. Some of the students get up and play some of the roles. We get the teachers up as well. Everyone gets really involved, and they gain some skills and some agency in dealing with mental health issues. So like a choose-your-own-adventure type? Pretty much, yeah. So it's a theatre that's really built around audience interaction. How does that go? It's usually really funny. We get some really <laughs> strange suggestions, but we play them out and they work out pretty well. We have a really good team and they're very good at impro improvisation, which helps. <laughs> Great, yeah, I guess you need to be really thinking on your th feet to make it work. Yes, very much so. And Mind Blank is affiliated with a couple of organisations around Wollongong. Uh, which ones? Well, at the moment we're working with the Wollongong Youth Centre doing some multicultural youth workshops. That's also with SCARF, which is the Strategic Community Assistance for Refugee Families. <laughs> That's the one. Uh, this is for students from culturally diverse backgrounds. Yep. And we're working with them to create another script. So we're having workshops at the Youth Centre, funded by the Council, to write a script for them with their input that they can perform at the end of the 10-week program. Fantastic. It sounds like you're doing some really great work and hopefully we get to go to one of your theatre productions and get some footage for us to show back here on the show. <laughs> you are very welcome to come along. Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much. Uh, it's now time for our second Limelight guest and it's Hannah Izzard from the New South Wales Cancer Council who's been out at the Biggest Morning Tea on campus today. <laughs> Here we have Hannah from the Cancer Council on campus. How are you going today? Good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really well, thanks. So what can you tell us about the biggest morning tea? Well, it's happening all around Australia today. It's the National Day, and we're running it on campus just to raise some money and get the word out there about the Cancer Council on campus and what students can gain from that as well. Great. Yeah. So is that happening right now? Yeah, it's been going all morning and hopefully well into the afternoon. Excellent. We actually had a couple of our UAW TV multimedia reporters out there in the field, so let's check out what they're doing out there and see what it was like and come back to the couch and have a bit more of a talk about it. Sure. Australia's biggest morning tea is a chance for friends, family and workmates to come together, share a cuppa and some delicious food whilst helping those affected by cancer. While Australia's Biggest Morning Tea's official date is Thursday the 22nd of May, events can still be held anytime during May or June. It's a collaborative effort from um, the Cancer Council, the Wellness Centre, the Rotaract Club and your Public Health Society. So we're all sort of working together using um, 
compo compostable stuff from the Enviro Collective and uh, raising money for cancer research. We're running this store today to raise money for Australia's biggest morning tea. All the proceeds today go towards the Cancer Council and Cancer Research. Um, we've got a raffle going on, we've got pancakes, we've got tea obviously. It's a really beautiful day. Come on down to the Duck Pond Lawn, bring a gold coin donation for some pancakes and a cup of tea. This is Sharon Wasidi reporting for Studio 20 Live. Well, that looks really delicious, and I think <laughs> I might have to go and check that out after we finish here Definitely. today. Yeah. <laughs> so, what sort of things are happening on campus uh, with the Cancer Council apart from the morning tea? Um, so we're offering internships and executive positions for people that want to be more involved, whether in a public health degree or whether you're doing marketing, we can offer positions um, in terms of the organisation. Does that mean it's integrated, your involvement with the Cancer Council can be integrated as a part of your degree? Yeah, you can actually get in credit points for it and you can do it as an internship or you can just be on the executive, but they'll give you a reference no matter what. Fantastic. Yeah. And the society started last year, is that right? Yeah, it was started last year and it's been carrying on since the start of this year as well and we're hoping to keep it going. So if somebody wanted to join the Cancer Council Society on campus, how would they do that? Well, you can access our Facebook page or you can um, go to one of our members meetings that we host um, every couple of weeks or so. Um, we also have um, regular stalls with UAW Wellbeing that are around the Check Out Your Health Societies. Um, or you can hashtag Studio 20 Live if you would like some more information. That sounds like it's a fantastic day, not just for students, but for families as well. Definitely. Um, speaking of families, we're going to cross over to some kids with Kathleen, who was checking out a kids archaeology site. Here on the couch with us is Kathleen Ryan, uh, one of our UOW reporters. How was it in the newsroom yesterday? It was fun. It was really fun. Um, it was really don't often hear that. No. <laughs> no, it was probably one of the funnest shoots that I've ever been to. The, it was just like we went to um, State, uh, sorry, Killerley uh, State Park in um, Shell Cove, and near the farm, is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's the sa yeah same place. Um, and there was just a simulated archaeological dig site um, as part of Kids Dig program that's running this week, and it was just th these little kids getting really involved, like digging in the sand oh, and just stop. uncovering all these little. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cute. That sounds <laughs> really yeah, cute. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. look at it. I yeah. See. Kids from across the Illawarra region are being encouraged to dig up our past. Kathleen Ryan has the story. This week, the University of Wollongong's Early Start Discovery and Interuni programs are encouraging kids to pick up a shovel and uncover the history of the Illawarra through the Kids Dig program. As part of Kids Fest Week, Kids Dig is simulating an archaeological dig site at Killalee State Park. An ordinary activity like digging, which everybody enjoys, can actually translate to um, a tertiary experience, um, a greater understanding of history and culture and, and the land around you. It's just really good to be involved with them learning and playing at the same time and it sort of starts that conversation with them about what they want to do when they finish school and um, what they want to be when they grow up. Project coordinator at UOW's Early Start Discovery Centre, Adam Salinga, explains that learning through play has the greatest impact on young minds. Uh, children who are exposed to um, stimulating learning environments from the earliest age are then better able to learn once they get into the formal learning environment. And so what we're saying is um, learning is important. Play is the way children learn. We're getting research and applying it to practice, taking that out to the public, and we're getting the kind of response we were hoping for. And so that response will now inform further research the simulated archaeological site at Killalee State Park will run until Saturday, so why not come check it out? The kids will dig it. I had not the fun today! <laughs> Kathleen Ryan, UOW Update. Oh, that was so... What did she say at the end? I've had lots of fun today. She just couldn't... I don't know, like she just yeah. wanted to scream and she was so excited. She couldn't contain, all she that couldn't contain her excitement. And that was done through Early Start. Yeah, wasn't Early it? Start Discovery Centre as a uh, part of UOW. God, yeah. we're roping them into UOW <laughs> early, aren't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. And it's, uh, it sounds like it was a really interesting story to cover, but obviously there was a lot going on yesterday and today as well. Uh, so we're joined by Andre now in the newsroom, who's going to keep us up to date with what's going on around the world and around Australia today.
Hi, Andre, are you there? Yep. Let's jump hey, straight hey, into hey. it. Sorry, what I didn't catch that. I said, g'day guys, how are you going? Oh, <laughs> Good, how are you doing? Thanks for repeating. <laughs> um, let's, look, let's jump straight into it. What happened up in okay. Sydney yesterday? Um, well, there were a couple of protests actually around the country, uh, but the big one was in Sydney. Uh, initially, they were organised by the National Tertiary Education Union over a pay dispute and a sacking at UTS. But after last, last week's budget, the National Union of Students organised a national day of action against uh, the government's plans to cut funding from education and to deregulate union fees. I understand. Um, a couple of UAW TV reporters went up, went roaming in Sydney yesterday and uh, Amber Kinye filed a report from Sydney. Sign our petition against the Liberals' plans to cut our education. I'm one of the education officers in the Students' Representative Council here and the Education Action Group has organised a um, protest here at Sydney Uni against the um, proposed changes in the budget for deregulating fees and also increasing student fees. So this will mean that a quality education is only accessible to students that have a large amount of money to pay for it. Meanwhile, the rest of students, most students, working class students, will be funneled into um, underfunded institutions. So it just creates a vicious cycle of people who have money to pay for tertiary education and people who have to go to underfunded public universities. Uh, I'm a bit cynical about whether they work or not, but uh, I think eventually it grows into a, a, a point where people are like, ah, crap, something's actually happening. Participating in that, in these, this sort of stuff is, is really important to get people to understand something big is happening. What it does, it's the best way of engaging as many students as possible um, in our actions. Like recently we've done some smaller stunts like the Q&A protest, protesting Julie Bishop when she came onto campus last Friday. But this engages a lot more people, so it shows that there is a mass opposition amongst the student body to these attacks. If there's any impression, if students are angry, students are angry that the government is trying to essentially double our student fees, angry that they're trying to follow a US style model where we know that students graduate with tripling debt, debt that costs the same as a mortgage for many people. Um, so I think that anger is fine and it's legitimate and if the government keeps attacking our education we're going to continue to be angry. Wow, a week later and no less controversy around surrounding the budget. Yeah, indeed. It's, um, it's interesting to see it all happen. <laughs> it's interesting to see Tony Abbott wink at a sex phone worker this morning. Did, oh, wow, that was Did awkward. you check that out, Andre? <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. That was a little bit, little bit I don't know, creepy? Is that the word? <laughs> I think that is the um, correct word. He's really got a habit of just putting his foot in it at the moment, doesn't he? <laughs> mm, yeah. He's not good off the script, is he? <laughs> off the script. Now, that was obviously a very heartfelt uh, reaction to the budget, but it hasn't all been like that, has it? No, well, there's actually been, uh, there was actually a cut report that uh, a couple of um, young liberal students went out and had a, a very small counter-protest to the number of uh, the protests around the country. So there is a, some support for the cuts and the deregulation of union fees, but... Yeah, not, not as big as a lot of those, those protests yet. <laughs> i got to say, whether you are opposed to it or in favour of it, it is good to see young people getting involved in politics and being, you know, can invested in our future. And not so good to see young people not getting involved in politics, as Joe Smith found out yesterday. University students have been rather vocal about their opinions of the budget on social media. So me and Jake decided to hit the campus at the University of Wollongong and find out how much knowledge they actually have. Okay. Um, well, um... Black. Okay, a part of me feels like... <laughs> so we know that all the education cuts are really crap from social media and it's going on about it. Yeah. It's taking from the poor and giving to the rich in a way. Like it benefits some and not others. But I don't know. Like he keeps saying that this is uh, the sacrifice that's worth it for the future of Australia, but I think it's absolutely bullshit because um, all these cuts uh, claim to be sacrifices when they're actually, you know, meant to be for jet fighters and all these other sort of like budget plans that he's got. So, um, yeah. Yeah, because Labor got us into a shit ton of debt. Well, the whole world's in debt, so. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. I've seen on Facebook so many people just talking about it, ranting on their statuses and whatnot getting a bit fed up, but I don't know what's happening with it. They don't know what's happening with it, but we'll see what happens. Someone's got to do something. <laughs> well, uh, at least people are passionate about it, even if they're not always really informed. Jet fighters, Andre? <laughs>
Beg your pardon? Jet fighters. Mm, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting movie. It's a lot of money for considering there's a lot of other cuts going on, but yeah, apparently the um the what is it, thirteen billion dollar funding for new jet planes isn't affected by taxpayers' money, but well, apparently claims, it's, um, I'd say. It's set aside, so um, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how that works. It's something I haven't actually quite looked into yet. But. Yeah. Well, let's um, bring it back to campus, and we have the Holy Festival on this Friday. Tell us about it. What yes. is it? Well, a couple of a small group of PR students are actually hosting a Holy Festival tomorrow uh, to support the 40K Foundation, uh, in particular for its student program known as 40K Globe. Um, the Holy is a Hindu spring festival, also called Festival of Colours, involving among among many other fun traditions, uh, throwing coloured powders and water throwing colour powder. Um, we've actually got a preview of that, even though it's this Friday. Hope to see you there, but let's check out a little bit more about what it's about. Five, four, three, two, one. Ever wanted to be a part of an Indian holly festival? Well, tomorrow's your chance when UOW students bring a splash of colour to the university grounds. It's a festival that brings all um, Indian culture together as well as accepting other cultures. We're hoping to bring all of the university together and get a bit of awareness about the Indian culture. Not just about paint and colour, the event is a fundraiser for an organisation with close links to the university. Our aim for the event is to raise awareness for the 40k Foundation. The Foundation enlists volunteers from unis across Australia to travel to India to monitor the activity of social businesses and immerse themselves in the local communities. But for tomorrow anyway, it's all about paint, powder and promoting 40k. There'll just be a lot of fun and probably hoping to spend a couple of hours here just getting to know all about the 40k Foundation and then of course heading to the uni bar afterwards. Jared Constable for Studio 20 Live. Wow, that looks really colourful and like a lot of fun and that's going to be on campus tomorrow, is that right Kathleen? Yeah, um, Lucy and I are actually covering the story tomorrow so I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, yeah, we're doing the holly throw and getting involved with it so I'm pretty excited. Two and fun stories this week. Yeah, yeah two fun good. stories. I'm just having loads of fun this week. And 40k is raising money for um, pods, education pods to be built in rural India. Now we'll keep it overseas and we're actually going to throw to Paris to our first <coughs> Wanifra intern who is there at the moment at Sydney and she's going to catch us up. Hi everyone, how are you going? I'm in Paris at the moment and it is 8 o'clock in the morning but I'm here to tell you guys exactly how it's been going. It's been awesome, I can't tell you how much fun it's been and I'm having the best time just being in Paris, waking up every day and walking through this amazing city is the best fun and that's probably been the highlight so far. The language barrier, I don't speak French and so it's a bit hard to get by sometimes but everyone knows a bit of English and if you can say we oui or merci then you're pretty much good. We've been working on this newsroom trend report so um, Julie Cassetti has been putting together a list of trends um, that have been happening in the newsroom over the past 12 months, and it's 12 months, and it's released every 12, every year, sorry. And now we're sort of getting back to normal, getting back to the news cycle, pitching, um, thinking of story ideas, writing them up, posting about them, interviewing, all that good stuff. At the moment, I'm working on a story about. Um, prisoners' right to information, um, so that should be good, hopefully that pans out, but we'll see. Just not worry about it. I was so stressed before I got here, I was just about accommodation, and about language and all kinds of stuff, but you just don't need to worry because it all just unrolls and um, everyone is so helpful and if they know someone who knows someone who can help you, they'll definitely set it up for you. and. Yeah, just don't worry and relax and just, you know, I don't know, come with a positive attitude and have a really good time. That's what we've been doing. So that's it for now. I'll catch up with you guys soon. And, yeah, looking forward to reporting to you again from Paris. I'm Sydney Pete for UWTV. 
So WANUFRA is the World Association of Newspapers and News Publishers committed to defending press freedom and promoting press freedom and also looking at innovation in journalism. So Sydney's doing some pretty interesting work regarding access to information in prisons. Uh, what happened was a journalist wrote about the death penalty and that magazine was banned in a US prison in Missouri. So she's looking into access to information and freedom of speech in nations um, that are in a democracy. Yeah, and obviously that's a huge issue because we do want people in prisons to still feel like part of society, that they still can contribute to society and learn and turn their lives around. But how can they do that if we're not giving them access to information? Exactly. And it's great to have our um, UOW students and our journalism students right on the front line of that. Yeah, and it's a fantastic opportunity for people to get involved with over there. Well, we're going to have a more light-hearted turn now. We're joined in the studio by a local band, We Came For Dinosaurs. Uh, they released their debut EP this week, uh, which you can check out on online. We'll have some links up to their Facebook, but they're going to be performing uh, one of their songs for us now. So take it away, we came for dinosaurs. Twist it up like wire Start to feel the strain Feed the fire burning in my veins. Though I wear it on my sleeve, I'm fine where I lay. Hand me just one more reprieve, I'll take it away. Chase the time, chase the time. Nothing set in stone Toe the line, toe the line Do it on your own Leave it all inside Waiting for your turn Turning tide while the ocean churns. Sure, I know what words are worth, the same as the rest. Give me trouble and on earth, the key to the The time, chase the time, nothing set on the stone. Toe the line, toe the line, do it on your own. You can toss and turn forever, if you want it done, then do it yourself. There's no point in making memories if you've got no time for anyone else. Chase the time, chase the time. Nothing set in stone. So That was Georgia, Jack and Chris from We Came For Dinosaurs. Wasn't that brilliant? I'm buying that EP. That was amazing. I, I loved it. 
Um, you might be wondering who is on the couch with us today. He's going to be talking about love. This is Ed Abbott. How are you going? I'm well, thanks. How are you guys? Yeah, good, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, let's address the elephant in the room. Uh, your name's Ed Abbott. Abbott, yeah. It's not a very popular name at the moment. Uh, any, um, any relation to the big man? Uh, no. No relations, so it's not my, it's not really, my not fault, what I none of this. Was <laughs> I heard that he was your uncle or... You well, know, I used to try and pretend he was, but I don't do that anymore, surprisingly. Obvious reasons. Um, yeah, <laughs> no relation at all. Okay, no relation <laughs> to Tony Abbott. I'm glad we've cleared that up. Yeah, just to clear it. <laughs> it's, now, it's your final episode of the session, maybe the year, we don't know. What did you what did you go and find out? Yeah, um, we wanted to try and change things up a little bit this week, um, just because like a change is as good as a holiday, they say. So um, like just that. try, it gets a bit boring if you just keep going the way you are. So we tried to change it up a little bit, so we'll have to check the video out and see what we've done. But yeah, it's all about love. Just end on something really lighthearted and right. yeah, make everyone feel good, feel oh, happy. Okay, well, I think after that song, I'm in the mood for love, so yeah. let's check it out. That was just beautiful. And Ed, we have to ask, what would your answer have been? I'd have to say my answer would be love. I just love love. He's Sharing love. and spreading love. What about you, Harrison? Yeah. Surely you've got to say your missus. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the wife is going to be the first one that I list, so yeah. And will you be hanging with us next session as well? Um, hopefully. We're, Sean and I are just discussing that, what we're going to do okay. with pop-up. So we've only got another semester here at UOW. Oh, really? Um, of our degrees left. So, right. yeah, just sort of getting it all sorted out. Is it hopefully. something that's going to continue post-uni, do you think? Um, we're actually thinking about um, keeping it going with other students and stuff like that so it can stay at oh. uni. But, Passing um, the baton. Yeah, we're all, that's, we've, that's all still early days and things, so we're still trying to sort all that out. But yeah, hopefully Pop-Up will still be around. Yeah, well, it's really taken on a life of its own since it started, so we'd love to see yeah. it continue at the uni. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of things that we love, uh, I really love brownies. And now we're going to have <laughs> My Kitchen Go Rules teaching you how you can make a brownie on campus. Hey guys, welcome to My Kitchen Go Rules. I'm Dan here and I am making a super sweet and tasty brownie in a mug. It's like a cake in a mug, but better. And it's really easy to make and it's really yummy to have after dinner. Okay, so whilst it requires a few ingredients, all you'll need is some melted butter, 
you'll need brown sugar, flour, just all purpose, a bit of milk, and of course some cocoa powder, and anything you like to top it. So some dark chocolate chips, which I have here, or you can get M&Ms, which are just as good. Okay, so all we've got to do is melt our butter, which I've pre-done. Then we need a quarter of a cup of flour, like so. So get that in there. We need a quarter cup of brown sugar as well. Now you can buy this stuff in bulk, so it's like super easy, super cheap. And you can also have it on the go. I bought my super awesome Tupperware mugs again today, so I can have it on the way to class. I'll put a bit of more flour in there, just so it's not too wet. And now we need two tablespoons of cocoa powder. Optional, optional type if you like your Nestle or you like your Cadbury, whatever tickles you fancy. And then you just need a little bit of milk. I've got these snazzy portable milks with me today, which is good for bringing to uni. And then you mix that all up, like so. Make sure it looks all mixed up and ready to go into the microwave. Much like a cake batter, if you like. But the good thing about brownies is it's so much more gooier than cake. So it's like so much better about for life. So it's great. Okay, and then I'm gonna pop some chopped chips in there just to get it really gourmet, if you like. Mix that around. Then all you gotta do is pop it in the microwave for about a minute and a half to two minutes, depending on your microwave. But as you know, the Kitchen Go microwaves are top notch. So we'll put them in there for about a minute and a half. And then, because we can't be bothered to wait for that, I've prepared one earlier. And then that's what, that's what your finished product will look like. A super yummy, super gooey brownie on the go. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. Back to you guys. Okay, this video needs to be shown to our ranters who are ranting about coffee. Mm. Hey guys, everyone likes coffee, but what's not so good about it? The lines for coffee are far too long for the price I have to pay for the ridiculous container size. It's far too small. I'm annoyed that I had to pay for my coffee because I have to pay every single day and I think coffee should be free because we're uni students, we're tired, we're stressed and coffee just makes you feel better about the day. Price has gone up and the bloody lines are too long. I don't want to wait. 10 years for my coffee. I just want to go in, order my coffee and just get it straight away. Well, there's some people pretty angry about needing to pay for coffee. You yeah, know what? Imagine if they had a brownie. I don't think they would be that bothered about waiting in line for coffee. Exactly, because it only took a couple of minutes to make the brownie, so they could order the coffee, go make a brownie, and come yeah. back and enjoy both oh, of them. We've had too much love on this show to be angry about coffee today. Definitely. I mean, I really love the band that came in. We came for dinosaurs. Yeah. And if anyone's keen to check them out, uh, they'll be performing at the uni bar for the wild card round of the band comp on the 12th of August. So definitely get along to that. And keep an eye out for Pop Up, who will be back next session with hopefully something a little bit different, Ed was saying. We've had a lot of fun on the show today. Uh, let us know what you think. Hashtag Studio 20 Live. Let us know how you think it went for our lucky number seven episode. <laughs> and thank you once again for joining us. And we hope to see you next week at 1pm on Thursday. Hello and welcome to the After Show. If you'd like to advertise with us or send an official letter of complaint concerning Trent's attempted nudity last week, you can contact us on Facebook and Twitter at hashtag Studio20Live. And now for the After Show. <laughs> this week I've been thinking about a quote from American journalist Mignon McLaughlin, which states that courage cannot see around corners, but goes around them anyway. Obviously, Mignon has never met me. You see, I look around the corner, assess the situation, and flee in terror. While I'm proverbially fleeing, I start thinking about corners. Ah! And now for a history lesson. 
Like all good inventions, the kona was invented by the Chinese during the first Ming dynasty. Oh. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today, and I'll see you again next week.